Now that we've talked about complex sketches and complex features, let's take a look at complex surfaces. Let's navigate to our Surface tab and take a look at Sweep, Loft, Boundary, and Felt Surface. Now you'll notice that Sweep, Loft, and Boundary sound a whole lot like our Sweep, Loft, and Boundary features. And that's because they are, with the exception of the fact that we're making a surface instead of a filled solid body. So the process of using these is the same. We go into Sweep, we can do a circular profile or a sketch profile, for instance, the bottom, and we can select a path. Now, in addition to the path, we can use guide curves. We have our options such as follow the path or twist along path, make direction normal, and so on. And we can also modify the tangency, for instance, start and end tangency. When we go into the lofted surface, again, we need a start and an end profile. And we still have the same limitations that we did inside of a feature. It's going to snap to the end of a sketch segment. So for the base, where we have an ellipse, it's not going to allow us to snap to any geometry. You simply have to free drag it around. For the boundary, again, the same conditions are true. Direction 1 and Direction 2 curves. And again, using our Selection Manager, we're able to select individual sketches. Now what I do want to talk about is a different way to handle this. As I mentioned in the Features video, when we're using things like a circle or an ellipse, things that don't necessarily have multiple sketch segments, like this slot does, we have an issue where we can't really determine where the start and end fall. So what I want to do is I want to create a new set of sketches on each of these planes and show you how to handle just part of it. So in this case, we're going to take this original sketch, which is sketch one, and we're simply going to start a new sketch on the top plane. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to say convert entities. Next thing I'm going to do is draw a line going from this left point to this right point. And then I'm going to use my trim and trim this top section and turn this horizontal line into a construction geometry. I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to go to my plane one. I'm going to grab the circle and I'm going to convert entities. Then I'm going to take a horizontal line and I'm going to trim the top section, turn this line into construction. And lastly, on plane two, we're going to convert the slot draw a horizontal line, and trim the top sections of these two arcs. Now you'll notice that when we do that, this line is no longer fully defined because these arcs can now be moved up and down to complete. So what we want to do is we want to take this line and the origin and make a midpoint relation. Then of course we want to convert it to construction and exit our sketch. So now what we have is sections. If we hide sketch one, two, and three, we have sections that are only half of what we want to create. And that's okay because we're creating a symmetric part. In reality, we could also only deal with a quarter of it. So if we wanted to, we could go back to, let's say, sketch seven. We can draw another line going from this point down to the origin, and we could trim it here as well, make this construction. And we could go back to sketch eight, modify this, again, draw another line from the origin to this quadrant, use trim, and then convert this to construction. Lastly, we can go to sketch nine. Again, draw a line from the origin. Use trim, get rid of this entity, and simply delete this entity. Turn this into a construction geometry and say OK. So now what we're left with is a quarter. And really what we want to do here is we want to focus on ways that we can create this geometry realistically. Now, when we were looking into creating lofted and boundary features, we had control over the start and end constraints. We could say normal to sketch profile. But I also want to introduce something to you that I use in my workflow whenever I'm dealing with complex surfaces, and that's the use of helper surfaces. Oftentimes having a surface can be a much better selection than just having a simple sketch and creating a normal to relation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create extruded surface, and I'm going to grab this sketch. Now really the direction doesn't matter, but just for my own personal preference, I like to make it go away from the section I'm trying to create. And I'm gonna say okay. And what I've done is I've created an extruded surface that has the exact same edge that I'm interested in with my sketch, but now I have a surface edge to select. We're gonna do the same process again using this edge. So you'll notice that now that we have two edges, we have these two selections that we can use to create a tangency relation. Next, I'm going to do an extruded surface of the base. Now, if you remember, I mentioned in the last video when we were talking about complex features that I have a relation on this spline that makes sure that it's vertical here. So this extrude will work. But if you don't have that relation with your sketch entities, 
you need to be sure that whatever direction you're extruding matches the direction that you're really encountering here. Now, a way to handle that is to take this edge and simply extend it. So you can use the extend surface option, and you can use the extend surface option here, and then we can create a boundary surface. So let's go ahead and just delete extrude three, and I'll show you that process. To show you this process, instead of using extend, we're actually gonna use a ruled surface, and there's a good reason for this. Let's first select our edge, make sure that we have tangent to surface, and say okay. When you use ruled surface as opposed to extend surface, what you do is you're creating a brand new patch. This means our original edge is still intact and it still ends at this face. If we were to use extend, it would create a single entity that carries on from this surface. So in this case, let's go again to ruled, grab this edge, tangent to surface, and say okay. Now we can create either a loft or a boundary from this edge to this edge, and our direction two will be the sketch that we're interested in. Now it's very important here that direction one, we have tangency to face on both of our selected edges. Now for sketch seven and direction two, it doesn't really matter. We can say normal to profile, or if you have any other relations you need to add, you can go ahead and say those. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide both of these small surfaces because we don't need them. But now you know the process of how to create this helper surface on the bottom if it's not a simple extrude. Let's go ahead and go to the top and we're gonna do an extrude up here as well. So now we have these different areas that are showing the profiles and the boundaries. So we're gonna take this original sketch here for the center line and just simply hide it. We don't need it for what we're doing here. Now we wanna create a boundary surface. We're gonna go from this edge to this edge, and for direction two, we're gonna select this edge. And on the top, we need to right click and use our selection manager and select this edge and this edge. Now when you're using the selection manager, if you see this icon pop up, that'll allow you to click on it and it'll complete the tangency. Once we say okay, we also wanna go back to our direction one curves and we wanna select this sketch in the middle. Now you'll notice it says error. Now it says error because of how this sketch intersects the surrounding geometry. Now we made sure that it intersected, but it's sort of out of order here. So let's go ahead and say delete and let's move on without this sketch. Edge one, we wanna make sure that we have tangency. Edge two, make sure that we have tangency. Edge three, again, we want tangency. And edge four, tangency as well. So now the big thing that we have here in terms of options is we can actually control the influence of each of these sections. For instance, if we wanted the top and the bottom sections to have more influence, we can simply kick that up and you'll notice that it actually changes the preview on the screen. If we scroll down, we can actually show some curvature displays and get a good idea of what we're doing here. So you can see with the mesh preview, if I go back up to my tangency slider, bring it back down to zero, you can see how those edges change. If we go to direction two, we can use those to influence our curvature, as well as direction one, and get a very different result. So you'll notice that as we sort of rotate this around, this section's actually bulging out when we use direction one to increase its influence. Now in this case, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say zero for both of those influences, and we'll try one more time to add this intermediate curve. So you notice it's not adding it. Let's go ahead and delete it. Let's go down to direction two and go ahead and add it here. Now we don't have the available option to do a tangency because we're dealing with a sketch. But in this case, we could do direction vector or normal to profile. But you do have to be aware that whatever relation you give it, it needs to match the guide curves or the direction curves that it's intersecting. Let's go ahead and say okay and take a look at the result. So we have a nice, really smooth surface, and from here, what we can do is we can take this and we can mirror it. Back on our Feature tab, select Mirror, select a plane you wanna mirror about, and in this case, we need to make sure that we go down and select Bodies to Mirror. You have the option to knit surfaces, say OK. Let's go ahead and hide some of our helper surfaces. Now we can take this and we can mirror this about the right plane, select Bodies to Mirror, and again, we can knit surfaces and say OK. So on the screen, you see some hard edges, and it's hard to determine what the curvature actually looks like, and there's a few things that you can do. From the View menu, on Display, we can go down and modify how tangent edges are shown. For instance, we can change them to be phantom. In that case, if you have a tangency between edges, you'll notice that it's a dashed line. You can also go in there, and you can turn tangent edges as removed. You of course also have the option to change a display style by removing edges as well. But I always like to keep my tangency edges on as phantom 
That way I know where edges are and I get a good idea whether or not I have tangency across those edges. Let's take a look at one more surface feature real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this surface body and I wanna show my helpers. So now I have these helpers here. We also had a sketch that's consumed within the boundary surface. Let's go ahead and show that as well. Now on the surface tab, we also have a filled surface option. Now there's a difference between boundary and fill. Filled allows you to select the boundaries to select edges that you want to create your geometry between, and it'll make a higher order differential, which is really the math that's happening in the background, patch of that area. You have a little bit less control than you do over boundary surface, but let's take a look at the option we have. So first thing I wanna do is select my patch boundary. So notice here, we don't have to select start and end direction one, direction two, we simply have to select the complete boundary and it'll fill in the rest. We do have options to apply a tangency to all edges, so we can do this pretty quickly. And we can use a constraint curve. So we can select this as a constraint curve and allow it to modify the geometry based on that. And you will notice that when we use a constraint curve, the patch changes. It really changes how it's going to affect the overall geometry. You also notice that we do have a curvature option. Now the curvature option is available inside a boundary surface as well, but you will notice that some very interesting things happen when you try to use a curvature relation on a very big surface like this. Now it's my recommendation that when you're doing something like a filled surface, if you're trying to use curvature relation, that you have to have 100% certainty of your defining boundaries. This is much too big a patch with too much complexity to try to use a curvature relation and allow it to solve. Now, if we remove the constraint curve and we give it a curvature relation, it'll probably do a better job, but you can still see that we're getting some anomalies in the middle of the surface. So again, we'll go back to tangency, we use a constraint curve that's in the middle, and we'll say okay. So you can see here that we get, again, a pretty nice patch. We can go ahead and we can hide the rest of our helper surfaces and take a look at what we have. So these are really two different ways using boundary and filled surface that you can approach creating some pretty complex surfaces. Now remember, whenever you're using things like lofts or boundaries, when your constraint curves or your direction one, direction two curves or your boundaries are something like a circle or an ellipse that doesn't really have a start and an end point, you're gonna run into issues when you're trying to create those points where you need to twist the surface around. So you really wanna make sure that you break it down into smaller sections, especially if it's something that's symmetric like this. Break it down into smaller sections, much easier to digest and much more control over your surfaces.